Welcome everyone to our admissions pros panel. All your questions answered as part of our College for TN uh, webinar series that we are hosting this year. My name is Jesse Green and I'm the Director of Communications for the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. And with me today, we also have my colleague Suzette. Good morning, everybody. Statewide Services Coordinator for the Tennessee Higher Education Commission. I will be monitoring that today. So if you have any questions as we go through, please drop those in the chat and we'll get answered either in real time as we go through or we'll have more questions at the end. Thank you, Suzette. And now, without further ado, we will introduce you to the individuals that you have come to hear from today. Uh, that is going to be our great admissions pros from different institutions across the state. So first off, we will pass it over to Tyler from Austin Peay. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Tyler Brown. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions and Dual Enrollment at Austin Peay State University. I'm super excited to be here. I'm five weeks in in the Tennessee system, but I've been in the Alabama system for almost 10 years, so super excited to be here today. Um, Austin Peay is located in Clarksville, Tennessee. It's up in the northwest corner of the state. Um, we're about 100 years strong. We've been Austin Peay State University since, I believe, 1927, and we offer a variety of associates, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees at our university. Um, some of the key takeaways, big business school, big STEM school, um, lots of nursing and healthcare professions coming to our school. So that's kind of us in a nutshell, but glad to be here today. Thank you, Tyler. Next, we have Kevin joining us from TCAP. My name is Kevin Harrison. I am the coordinator of enrollment services for TCAT Nashville and its off-site campuses, which are in Portland and Springfield. Uh, we have um, 18 programs uh, um, total uh, that are offered. Some of them are duplicated at our uh, off-site. I've been with TCAT for almost 15 years. Um, I worked in everything from an instructor to enrollment services. Uh, also work with special industry and apprenticeships as well. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Now we'll uh, go over to Turner with Tennessee Tech. Good morning, everybody. My name is Turner Fain. Um, I am the Campus Visits and Events Coordinator here at Tennessee Tech. So I'm a part of the university recruitment team. Um, my day-to-day -day is seeing visitors come in, planning big admissions recruitment events. Um, we are here in Cookville, Tennessee, which is centrally located in the state. Um, and we have eight different colleges with over 300 programs of study. So hopefully we have something that closely aligns with some of your students' interests. Awesome. And last, but definitely not least, we have Sarah from Tallahassee. Yes. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah Davis. I am the manager of recruitment team here at Tallahassee State. Um, I've been with Tallahassee for about 12 years. I started out in financial aid and uh, we are located in Knoxville, Tennessee. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, so thank you all panelists for joining us today. And again, thank you to all of our attendees that are joining us from across the state. Before we get started with our questions for all of our panelists, we'd love to learn a little bit more about each of your institutions. I know that a lot of you are familiar with them and maybe have visited them before. Definitely sent students your way, but would love to hear just some high points about your institution. And we'll kind of go in reverse order. How about that? So Sarah, why don't you kick us off? Sure, thank you. Um, yes, Pellissippi State is uh, the largest community college in the state of Tennessee with around 9,000 students. Um, we are at Tennessee Promise School, but um, we do have a small feeling because our average classroom size is about 22 per instructor. Um, the biggest question I get is, will our credits transfer? And the answer is yes. Um, if you're following one of our transfer pathway, um, we are the largest feeder to the University of Tennessee Knoxville. Um, starting this year, this fall, we have joined the world of athletics and we're very excited about that. We are the Pellissippi Panthers and we're getting kicked off, uh, starting off with men's golf, women's volleyball, men's and women's cross country and half marathon, and then men's and women's soccer. We also are number three in the country for sending students to study abroad. So we have a very robust study abroad program. We travel all over the world and we have scholarships that we set aside specifically for study abroad. 
Um, our dual enrollment is is very is growing rapidly, and we're very excited about that. Right now, our dual enrollment is about twenty two percent of our total enrollment. Um, we do have four campuses throughout Knoxville and Blunt County, and we do have a variety of class offerings. We do obviously in person, but we also offer synchronous and asynchronous virtual options, and we also offer hybrid classes. Um, some of our majors that are, are very popular are nursing, the media technologies, which is audio production, video production, uh, photography, design for web and print and web technology, um, computer information technology, cyber defense, welding, and then business is another very popular major for us. We do offer the Associate of Applied Science degrees the Associate of Art, the Associate of Science, the Associate of Fine Art, and the Associate of Science in Teaching, the AST degree. Um, last year, our nursing students had a 100% pass rate for the NCLEX, so we we're very excited about that. And uh, we have lots of resources for our students, um, such as free tutoring, counseling. We have a garden and a pantry. Uh, we have student engagement and leadership, and starting this year, we have success coaches that we are assigning for every student that comes in. And that's about it. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Turner, will you tell us a little bit more about Tennessee Tech? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. Um, so as I mentioned, we have eight different colleges um, with 300 programs of study. Um, that can sound a little intimidating or overwhelming, especially to um, you know first time college students, um, but we do have resources in place to help them. So we have um, our launch pad, which happens at orientation. That's where they're advised. Um, it doesn't matter if they come in and know 110% what they want to do with the rest of their lives, they'll be advised by our launch pad. If they're somewhere in the middle, 50-50, they know what they're good at, they know what they're bad at, we'll still advise them. And then if they come in on the other end of the spectrum, negative 5% sure of what they want to do with their lives, they just know that they want to go to college, um, we will also help them there in the launch pad. So it's a great resource for all of our students to make sure that they're actually chipping away towards a degree and not wasting time and wasting money in those resources. Um, so again, I, we also have in place once they become students, um, our student success centers to make sure that they're getting tutoring, not falling behind um, and those type of things. Um, so outside of the academia, we have um, 300 clubs and organizations here on our campus. Um, those are anything from student government, um, Greek life, we have um, Goodness, we've got clubs and organizations that fall within your different colleges. I know that our engineering group will um, do a Baja racing group where they build a car from scratch and then they go and race it around the country um, with other colleges. Um, we've got intramural sports. We've actually got 15 Division I NCAA teams here now on our campus. Um, we've got intramural sports amongst the student body. Um, and then we have clubs and organizations that pretty much our students just make up. They're they're really fun. They're um, Disney Lovers Club or the Hammock Guys Club um, because we have such great natural beauty around this area. Um, so we're centrally located, like I mentioned earlier, we're in central time zone. Um, we have this amazing community and there's this wonderful overlap between the community and the school. A lot of people who start businesses here um, actually went to school here. And so you're going to get like a discount at all of the local coffee shops. We've got 20 coffee shops within an hour radius of our campus. Um, we've got boutiques, um, but then we kind of have the best of both worlds because we have access to the interstate where you can find any franchise, two Walmarts, a Publix, those kind of things. So it's um, kind of the best of both worlds. We're about an hour um, from Nashville, maybe an hour and 15, depending on uh, maybe some construction or traffic that's going on. Um, and then we're about an hour and 45 from Knoxville and Chattanooga. Um, then we have here on campus, we have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which is something we're very proud of um, because we don't want our students to fall behind. We want them to get that hands on experience for their career. Um, we want to make sure that when they do go out into the workforce, they have connections through their professors. They have connections. Um, a professor can actually speak to their work and not just say, you know, you are one of several hundred in my class, you know, it's 18 to 1. I know these students. Um, as far as paying for college, um, two thirds of our students receive some form of financial aid. Um, we have a 50% of our students uh, graduate debt free, which is pretty incredible. Um, the way that they're able to do that is um, through a lot of our scholarships that we offer. 
um, and most of them are stackable. So we have what we call in our office kind of free money. It's the presidential scholarships. Those are what you're pulled for automatically. So as long as you are admitted before December 15th, if you qualify with your test scores and your GPA, you will be pulled automatically for our presidential scholarships. There's five different levels of those scholarships and you can actually renew them each year. Um, those are stackable with a lot of our departmental scholarships. And the really cool thing about that is we have over 750 scholarships here on our campus that we offer to students. Again, not trying to overwhelm anyone. The really cool thing about that is that once you're admitted, you're prompted to fill out one application. And this one application will sift through and find out of these 800 scholarships, which ones you're eligible for, and it will pull you automatically. So an example that I like to give is gonna be, um, say you're seeking an engineering degree, but you maybe played trombone in your school band. Um, you can audition for a music scholarship to help pay for that engineering degree, which is something that's pretty incredible. Um, so we have presidential, we have departmental, and then we also have um, our different FAFSA. We always encourage our students to file for you know additional financial aid, whether they think that they'll receive it or not. Um, I am going to give a little shameless plug here at the end for a couple of things that we have going on. Um, so I am the campus visits coordinator and we truly believe that the best way to find the school that's the fit for you is, is to come on to our campus, to visit our campus. So we actually have a big event coming up on September 30th called Preview Day. Um, and it's a big day where you can meet with all of the majors. Um, we'll have something kind of similar in the spring um, for admitted students. But this is for anyone that's just considering Tennessee Tech. You get to come on a Saturday and see what it's all about. Um, and then we've also got um, campus VIPs, which happen six times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and they happen in the morning and afternoon. We've currently got one taking place right now. You register for that. You're going to get to sit down with an admissions counselor for 45 minutes and hear a presentation. Um, you're going to get to do a walking tour on campus. It's a one-on-one -on -one tour um, with a current student, and you're able to ask them questions. Then you're going to be dropped off for a departmental meeting with the major of your choice. Then you can go see our residence hall. We offer you a complimentary lunch, and we give you a free t-shirt and a school excuse. So it's a pretty good deal. All you have to do is register on our website, and we highly encourage students who are considering us um, to do that. As far as um, teachers, uh, high school counselors, you guys, we typically do on Tuesday, Thursdays group tours. So reach out to me if you ever want to bring a group. Um, and that's fantastic for maybe students who don't have the transportation to get to our campus on their own. Um, and then the last thing I'll tell you guys, um, just because time is ticking on it, is going to be that September is free app month. We've waived the application fee, which is typically non-refundable, $25. We've waived it for the month of September. So we're at the halfway point of that. So we're just going to encourage your students, if we're on the list, if we're on the top five, the top three, go ahead and fill out that application. It's not very lengthy. Um, and we're definitely waiving the fee as of this month and it won't happen again, unfortunately. So that's about it. Awesome. Thank you, Turner. Great. And then Kevin with the TCAT Metro, why don't you talk a little bit about what you all have to offer? Well, if we had to play the game, which of these things is not like the other, that would be me. So uh, TCATs, uh, not just at Nashville, but across the state of Tennessee, uh, we are a premier um, provider of technical and skilled education for people to provide them a path, a more accelerated path to be able to go to work uh, and be prepared in the workforce. We're not general education, uh, which a lot, if not all of our students really appreciate um, and um, come to us for those reasons. Uh, so most of our programs are 20 months or less. Um, some programs uh, are set, such as cosmetology, health science programs, uh, that they have to achieve a certain amount of hours uh, in a certain amount of time and are cohorted together to be able to achieve. But most of our programs are open entry, open exit, which means that uh, if we have a seat, we usually do two enrollments uh, during a semester. We do the first day of the term, and then we do the first Monday of the second month. And after, as long as we have an open seat, we're able to start people at that time. Uh, in all the uh, open entry exit uh, programs like that, uh, the nature would be to think, well, I'm going to be behind, but it's really like a monopoly. Everybody starts at go. They just start at a different time. Uh, so everybody doesn't always roll at the same time. But we also see that they're able to progress. We call it self-paced, which is a little dangerous uh, because the 18-year-old boy will hear, um, I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. But that's not what it really means. Uh, what it really means is that the individual can stay on pace or they can get ahead of pace. 
so that they can accelerate their self as they learn the competencies and proof uh, proficiency in them and actually complete our program sooner than they're designed. So a 12 month program can be completed in 10 months if the student has per, uh, presented and provided uh, and met all the competencies that we uh, expect of them. Um, our admissions process is pretty simple. Uh, I applications online, um, those things uh, is free. Uh, it's the same website, no matter what area of the state that a person may be in. So you'll go and you'll see a TCAT Knoxville, you'll see a TCAT Chattanooga, Hartsville and Nashville, and they would apply on those for that particular area in which they live uh, for the programs that are available to them there. They'll be contacted by one of our three admissions counselors or myself um, out of the uh, Portland uh, and Springfield campuses. It's a lot more uh, individualized. We don't have the same volume of applicants uh, that the uh, community college and universities would have. So we're able to do just a little bit more on the aspect of a more one-on-one -on -one touch. Uh, we do uh, in, encourage and will most likely make it a requirement that they attend a, a campus visit at some point prior to uh, registration. I found in my experience uh, that people who come on campus are more likely to enroll and they're more likely to be retained on in the program. So we're gonna do that as encouragement, one to explore uh, the different amount of programs that we have on campus uh, because they'll come in. I had a student just in the last week, he wanted to be a welder. Uh, shockingly, we would say that probably 75% of the uh, people that come on campus, they want welding. So we show them their options. And this young man had never heard of a program called machine tool technology. He didn't know what it was. But after visiting it, he said, that is definitely what I want to do. That's what I, I resonate with more. So. That is something that uh, we work with. Obviously, we do school tours uh, um, that bring them uh, to our campus. We've already had several uh, already uh, uh, at both campuses and planning more. Uh, and we're glad to host uh, trips uh, because I believe it starts. And anywhere from freshman to a senior um, um, is good and welcome to uh, uh, attend those. As far as our enrollment this year, we're up uh, versus previous year. Uh, so that's a good sign, uh, knowing I've just kind of taken over what's going on in Nashville, but in Portland, we were, uh, we're up about 38% over last year uh, on our enrollment, which is very encouraging in a year's time. Uh, our dual enrollment is really increased. In the last year, we've uh, had a good relationship uh, in building a good partnership with Metro uh, Public Schools, and um, that's increased our dual enrollment, uh, but we also have dual enrollment at our Springfield campus uh, and at our uh, at Springfield High School, Cheatham County High School, and uh, at our Portland campus, we have a middle technical college there uh, that students can choose in Sumner County to uh, come there and do their high school work and come uh, for the majority of the day uh, down into one of our TCAP programs. And in certain programs, one of them being welding, that's always the example we always give is welding. If they come their junior and senior year, they can truly graduate with their high school diploma and a TCAT diploma and be employable at that time. Uh, our employment rates are going up. Um, there is, it seems to be a more demand uh, than it's ever been. Uh, our apprenticeships are on the, on the rise as well as special industry training that we're doing. So uh, we're very excited about what we're doing. Uh, we go out into the high schools uh, quite a bit, always welcome uh, those uh, opportunities go and speak to students uh, about what we do. And, um, you know, I, I've been doing this for 15 years and I, I simplified it down to we build stuff and fix stuff uh, at, at TCATS, you know, where uh, you'll see things uh, uh, that vary within that. But as a general rule, uh, that's what we're doing. I say cosmetology would argue with me that, but if you can see my head, I don't know a lot about cosmetology. So uh, we stick with what we know. Um, and we're very excited uh, about what the direction that we see, not just TCAT Nashville and its uh, off-site campuses, but TCATs as a whole. Uh, obviously, the uh, governor has invested a lot of money. As you can see behind me, uh, through the Give uh, 2.0 grant, there's about a million dollars worth of equipment sitting behind me here that we're teaching industrial maintenance at our Springfield site um, and getting students enrolled, uh, getting them the training so that they're ready to go to work. And lastly, we do a lot of what we call co-ops. After they're halfway through their program, 
in most of our programs that doesn't ha happen in health science, cosmetology, and those type of programs because of the, uh, the regulations uh, from the state upon them. Uh, but we co-op students. So when they're halfway through their program, uh, opportunity comes along, we send them on an interview and a company hires them, they can go to work for four days a week, come to school for one day a week. They're getting paid for that training. Normally it turns into uh, full-time employment. Um, actually got to, uh, got three high school students that started with us. They graduated in May, started in June. They very uh, adept at what they're doing and they're already starting to co-op this month, uh, which is very exciting. That's what they're coming to school for so they can learn a skill, learn something so that they can go to work uh, and providing them those opportunities early, um, you know, only encourages more people to come and their classmates to excel as well, so. Awesome, thank you, Kevin, appreciate it. And then, um, yeah, Tyler, why don't you tell us a little bit about Austin Peay? Yes, I'll make it quick. Um, Austin P. once again, it's located in Clarksville, Tennessee. Um, it's one of the fastest growing cities in the state, and it's got the youngest population in the state. So it's, it's growing pretty quickly. Um, we're almost at 10,000 strong here with still a uh, ratio of faculty to student of 18 to 1. Um, we're in the ASUN conference, so if you saw us on TV this past week play in Tennessee, and um, we do have a game this upcoming weekend where students can attend, or future students, um, and get a tour on campus while they're here at Tailgate. Um, we do have two different campuses, one here in Clarksville and one at Fort Campbell. APSU serves um, a large population of military students um, and work with those students well. Um, we are Tennessee Promise eligible, and we do a lot of with dual enrollment. Um, we have about 1,200 students are in dual enrollment program across 40 different sites. Um, we do have those, again, those traditional four-year routes. We do offer some associate's degrees as well. Just some quick plugs so that we can get started, but we do have a preview day coming up on October 14th. We do encourage all students that are interested in Austin P to attend the preview day and tour campus. You can also set up a tour at any time. Um, we give tours Monday through Friday in the morning and in the afternoon. So if any student is ever interested and maybe you get a day away from school, um, definitely consider us. Um, and then again, that game this weekend is at six o'clock. We will be giving tours out of our tailgate field if anybody's interested. You can always um, complete your application online or you can do it in our office. Um, and we do offer waivers throughout the year. If you need any um, help with getting those waivers, please contact your admissions counselor. Uh, but I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Tyler. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, great introductions for all of your institutions. Now we'll get rolling with a few questions, more application specific, because uh, as you all know, and all of our counselors know as well, TTEC hosts uh, as part of our Pass the College events every year, our Tennessee uh, College Application and Exploration Month. And so we're in the thick of that right now in September. And next week is actually our College Application Official Week. Uh, where students will be thinking about applying. This week they're preparing to apply. So with that being said, what are some ways that your institutions have recently made the application easier for students? What about Kevin? How about we have uh, you go first about TCAT and your application process? Well, uh, for the last few years, we've had an online application. I can still, I mean, I, I'm old enough that I've been in the system. I remember we had paper applications. So, uh, you know, they have to get them, fill them out, uh, and, and mail them in, or they came to campus to do that. So, having an online application, and I know that sounds crazy because everybody else has had online cap applications for many years, uh, but just having that available uh, to our students that they can do that um, uh, from home, uh, from school, uh, on campus while they come and do a, a, a tour, um, and we give assistance. You know, we're, you know, uh, that that's the... The biggest thing is going out and just uh, assisting them in the classroom. Obviously, with dual enrollment, we've done it. Uh, and, and it's a good teaching tool because they're going to have to do those same things when they're applying for, you know, uh, for jobs in the future uh, and putting in resumes and those kind of things. So uh, it's not just uh, something that teaches them uh, uh, something, gets something done that we want done or that they need to get done to enroll in college, but uh, certainly gives them a uh, 
skill for uh, when they're applying for jobs on down the road. But uh, our application process is pretty simple. You go to the TCAT web website, uh, depending on the area, and uh, and fly directly there. Awesome, thanks. Turner, what about Tennessee Tech? Yeah, so we're pretty excited. We actually just implemented a new CRM that has streamlined the processes for us. Um, were there a little bit of growing pains at the beginning? Yes, possibly. Um, but it has made it a little bit quicker, um, a little bit more efficient, and everything's kind of all fluid on the same page instead of checking several systems. So we're really excited about that. Um, overall, it's made it easier for the student and for us. Um, and then um, our application is pretty short. Um, we've taken a lot of time and consideration of how we can shorten it, um, make it as easy as possible. Um, to get that information from the students. So right now we're sitting at about a five minute application time. If you know most of the information, it takes five minutes, sometimes even less. Um, so we try to make it as simple as possible. And then like I mentioned earlier, um, this month we're trying to make it even easier uh, by offering a, a fee waiver um, and covering the cost of that application fee. So. Awesome. Tyler, Austin P. Yes, yeah, so um, we use an atomic response system. So what that means is that, you know, if a student's going through our application, it's going to remove any questions that might not be relevant to that student based on what they have previously selected. Um, we also are using a CRM system that will you know, kind of keep up with students to see where they are in the application process. If we're missing documents, it'll let them know via their um, APSU assigned email, also in letter form. Um, and once we get closer to different due dates, we'll also start making calls to those students as well. Um, and so those are just a few ways. Once a student's actually admitted, uh, one of the new ways that we're trying to reach students is just through text message campaigns, making sure that we're kind of concisely just reaching out to them and meeting students where they are. We are looking into some of our um, admission standards for dual enrollment students. Um, there's some barriers to entry there that I think we're looking into removing. But as far as the application itself, just making it simpler, easier to know where you are in the timeline, um, and then also those waivers once it gets to that point. Sarah? Yes, um, our application is very easy. Um, it also takes about five minutes. There's no essay. It's free all the time. Um, it's on our website. But we, in addition, are implementing a CRM right now. So it is, we are going to have a new application very soon. I think it's going to go live hopefully in December. Um, and it will really make that application process easier. But um, for right now, my team goes out to all of our high schools and uh, we do applications in the high schools and we're available to do that. If anybody wants us to come, um, just reach out. That's great. Thank you. Uh, as we all know, as admissions people and counselors, students still have trouble with the application. Um, but what resources do you have that are available? And I'll kind of leave this open ended to anyone that would like to answer. Um, but are there any specific resources you have available for students to help with the application? Uh, and as Sarah mentioned, coming to the schools as well as Kevin, what else do you all have? I'll I don't mind. In. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I knew that would happen. Um, go ahead. Yeah, if the student, like, again, we can come into the high school, but if, if, if that doesn't work, they can come to our campus. And uh, we do have a, a newer kind of like a one stop. It's called our Start Strong Center, and it combines admissions records and financial aid into one office. Um, which is new for us, um, but we can help with the application, the FAFSA, anything related. Um, we can. We have people here that are walking through step by step. I was just going to say, um, so we have a team of admissions counselors who are assigned to a certain territory so they can come and do classroom visits, lunchroom visits, um, come speak to your students at big events, um, those type of things. We're also open Monday through Friday, um, 8 to 430. So our line, we get a lot of questions. Um, our phone will be answered all day. Um, and then also we offer computers in our lobby. Um, that way, if maybe a group of students or um, a student who just finished their tour wants to go ahead and apply, um, they can do it right there in our lobby. 
Same thing at Austin P, but we will also, um, if there's a student that maybe can't come to us or we maybe might not be able to get to them um, quickly, we can also meet with them online via Skype or Teams or whatever way that's most convenient for them. We'll kind of meet them where they are. So um, that student just needs to reach out to us, but we can definitely set it up that way as well. We do help students in our lobby with the application as well as the FAFSA um, and even setting up for you know, housing or whatever else, but um, all of those same ways, but also we'll just, you know, if, if you ever have a student that needs kind of some one-on-one -on -one support, they can always do a Teams or a Skype meeting or whatever is most convenient for them. And, and we're basically the same way. Uh, just trying to meet students where there are uh, best uh, situation for them. Uh, there will be some situations from time to time where a student's needing a little special uh, attention uh, with getting an application filled out. Um, we've come to schools, they come to us, um, application weeks, you know, uh, application nights. We're, we're glad to help in any way that we can. Hey, we had a, a question come in asking what CRMs are the colleges using? Great question. I know that Turner and um, Tyler both mentioned they currently have one and Sarah has one in process. So, yeah, please let us know. Ours is Slate. We are, um, we're in a different application right now, but we are moving to Slate as well, um, just because it's one of the best CRMs for higher ed. We're doing uh, the same thing. Is, uh, we're going with uh, Banner Recruit, because Banner's our main system that we use, so we're using that CRM. Awesome. Banner is our main system. Um, we've been integrating uh, Slate uh, from a uh, communication standpoint. Uh, what the student's going to see is not going to be any different, but in the background, it's going to be Slate that uh, integrates with our Banner system. Very true. Thanks, Suzette, for that question. Um, next question is, we have school counselors joining us from all across the state today. What resources do you have specifically for school counselors to help them better help their student, maybe application specific or any other resources that you might have? Um, Kevin, you're the first one I see, so I'll call on you first. <laughs> of course you had to call on me first. Um, <laughs> I, outside of uh, brochures and even the things that are provided, uh, you know, by THAC on, uh, and TSAC on how um, to complete for financial aid, um, those are our main uh, areas. We don't have as uh, a big a budget for uh, a lot of different resources. Uh, you're looking at uh, on the screen, uh, we're some of the biggest resources that we can offer to any of our high schools, um, you know, along with uh, all the reps at, at TSAC to help with FAFSAs and everything else that, that goes into um, uh, enrolling in college. Um, you know, ultimately it gets down to, to us individually uh, to our admissions counselors, um, working with schools, uh, but also providing them with the necessary documentation, you know, what, what our classes uh, are offered and, um, you know, that, that's what mostly that we have to offer. Tyler, I see you agree in there. Uh, what about Austin P? Well, I'll just first off, and I'm sure everybody on this panel will, will agree, but we always appreciate any of the work that our school counselors are doing. Um, we know that you all work very hard. And so if there's ever anything, I will, I will say this for us to be, but I'm sure the rest of them will say this as well. If there's anything that you all ever need from us, definitely reach out. Um, we're, we're always willing to assist. We know that there's kind of some peaks and valleys um for schools and and different times of the year where it's a little harder maybe to get into those schools but um just as far as resources we we definitely provide um, some events throughout the years to just kind of you know make sure that we're all on the same page about what's upcoming what's going on um especially with the fafsa simplification act we've been doing a lot of work with educating our school counselors on how that will change um, so that they can help their students but um you know if Again, if you ever have want to set up a tour, um, want us to come to your school, any of those kind of things, please let us know. But general resources, we do have flyers, webinars, um, things available just for, you know, kind of updates to what's going on in our school system. Awesome. Sarah? 
Yes, uh, we have a, a counselor newsletter that we send out to our local counselors. Um, we also have uh, meetings, a counselor. It started out as a counselor advisory board meeting, and we only invited certain counselors, but since COVID, we've opened that up, and now we try to invite because they can do in person or virtual. So now we try to invite all counselors to that counselor meeting. Um, and then we also offer tours for our counselors as well. This usually in the summer, but we can go into the high school. We work very closely with our counselors and we do application days, FAFSA workshops at the high schools as well as at, at, on our campus. Awesome, Turner. Yeah, so I'm just going to echo what Tyler said at the beginning of his, obviously reach out to us if there's more that we can be doing or something that you like that we're already doing um, to encourage us to keep doing it or maybe offer it to other schools. But it's a lot of the same things. I mean, we offer the print materials. Um, we host events. I mentioned preview day in the fall is our biggest one um, for our current students. Uh, I'm sorry, for our prospective students. But then once you're admitted, we invite you back in the spring for a showcase to spend time with your actual major department. Um, and then, um, you know, and, and high school counselors can be involved in that as well. Um, you can bring a group to that. You can register them. Um, we're happy to pass out flyers, send stuff for you to hang up. Um, in your hallways, um, but always hosting events. We do the group visits, like I mentioned. And if you have a certain group, maybe it's not um, just a class. It's like a, an organization at your school that's interested in something we can meet with. We can schedule out a department that you can meet with, or there's a certain facility that you want to see. Like we can personalize and customize that group visit. It doesn't have to just be a generic tour. Um, and then again, we have counselors, admissions counselors who just kind of saturate our state um, and they should be your resource, your lifeline to us. Um, all your questions. Um, if you don't know who they are, we do have a map on our website of who your counselor is, but you can always um, just email us and that way um, we can make sure you know who can be coming into your classroom, presentations, all those great things. Um, and they'll even do nighttime events. They'll come to your PTA meetings if that's a good time for you. Um, whatever you think is best, speaking to the students, speaking to the parents, speaking to the other teachers that are there. Um, we kind of feed off what you guys give us. Um, so. That's great. Thank you. So a barrier for students is typically the application fees that add up over time as they're applying for several different institutions. What is the application fee for your schools and do you provide any assistance? I'll, I'll toss it to Turner first because I know that she's mentioned that they are uh, application free this month of September, but throughout the rest of the year, what what is a way for students to get access to help for that? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you caught on to that. I think I only mentioned it three times already. Um, I just want to make sure because there's only 15 days left. So yeah, so in the month of September, we do offer that free app and we really try to push that. Um, but then um, throughout the rest of the year, we encourage you as the high school counselor, reach out to us if you have a specific student or a specific group of students. Um, I know, I believe it's like the NACAC waiver that they can fill out, but main thing is to reach out to us. Um, myself, Frank Tittle, our director of admissions, really your admissions counselor will be the one to get you in contact, but we will figure out a solution for your student. We'll, we'll figure out something that we can help them and not let that be the reason that they are not able to apply. Um, so we definitely would say it's a very personable approach. We don't want you to just try or go away from us to try and figure it out. We want you to come to us with those students um, and we're going to find a solution for you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Tyler? Um, yes, well, similar, we will offer um, advertised fee waivers throughout the um, throughout the academic year. Our fee is traditionally $25, um, but we do have regional counselors that are assigned to geographical locations. So if you are working with an admissions counselor for Austin P and you have a student that that is going to be a barrier for them, just reach out to them. We do offer those discount waivers as well. Awesome. And I have an inkling what TCAT and Pellissippi might say. I believe that it is completely free to apply at both of their institutions. Is there anything else that you all would like to add about any other fees or things you might have? We, we don't have anything. We don't have any fees on the app or, you know, anything initially uh, uh, to get, you know, to be enrolled uh, into any of our programs. Awesome. So definitely a good idea for students to, even if they are not considering a community college or a TCAP, to still apply uh, for free to those institutions as a backup plan. Maybe if that's not their first plan, it always is a good idea. Great. 
And then after a student applies, what are the next steps in the process for them? Uh, what do they do after they've submitted that application? What happens? Uh, Kevin, you go first. Well, our system is automatically going to generate them an email uh, that uh, is going to go out to them, most likely to most of our applicants to their junk mail uh, or to one of their 10,000 other emails that they don't look at. Uh, but uh, it generates that. Uh, but what we're going to start doing um, at our Nashville campus that I've already been doing at uh, the other sites uh, for the last years is going to generate an email from, from an admissions counselor. Uh, and uh, where we can, we're going to uh, start implementing a, a letter in the mail. Um, you know, thank you for applying. Uh, what I've asked them in Slate is a, uh, to program in that as soon as an applicant has uh, submitted their application within a minute or less, that they would receive a text. Um, you know, thank you for applying. Uh, just like setting up any other account at, any other business, anything else that you do, you always get a text that says, thank you for setting this up, uh, that that would be an immediate uh, um, thing, but I, I don't have any control over whether or not that's gonna happen or not, but that's what I'd like to see. Uh, but the letter is something that we, we want to get to. I've been doing uh, at my other locations uh, for the last year. Uh, I had a parent last weekend, ran out to him on a Saturday, found out who I was and what I'd done, and they said, yeah, my son didn't get in because he didn't check his email. Boy, I wished I'd have had a letter in the mail. So that's something we're going to go back to that, uh, um, you know, making that just a little bit more personable. And that will, after that application, making contact with that individual about what their next steps need to be uh, from that point forward. Obviously, if they're high school this fall, applying for the next fall, it's a little slower walk of that process, but still you know, lining out what they need to be doing, what they expect. Great. Sarah. Yes, um, after the student applies uh, to Pellissippi, they do get uh, two emails from us to their personal email. Uh, the first one is um, prompting them to set up their accounts, their Pellissippi email and their portal, my Pellissippi account. Um, the second email is from their, their enrollment coordinator um, and it has a little video saying, Thank you for applying. This I am your enrollment coordinator. Reach out to me if you have any questions. But then we strongly direct them to check their Pellissippi email and check their portal. Great, Tyler. They, oh, sorry. Real quick. They oh, also I'm sorry. Get, I'm sorry. They also get a letter in the mail, official acceptance letter, but that does not go out until they're until we have received their transcripts and test scores. Got it. Very important. Thank you. Tyler, now over to you. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, when a student finishes applying, they can probably expect to hear from us within a week. Um, we'll typically send them both an email and a letter in the mail letting them know if the decision, um, if they were admitted or not. Once they're admitted, I think there are a few key things that um, a student should probably do first. Um, I start interviewing, go out and see these different colleges and interview them, see what uh, departments are like and what the school looks like and what it feels like to you. Um, every place has their own things that they're good at and things um, that, you know, they probably need a little more help with. So figuring out where your strengths are um, and what schools going to best meet your needs, I think is going to be important. And then specifically for this year, um, go ahead and once, you know, the FAFSA opens up late December, early January, go ahead and get in that completed um, so that you know kind of what's new with the differences between EFC and uh, the student aid index, knowing kind of how much money that the federal government's going to get you, how much money your institutions are going to offer you that you've been admitted to, I think will be pretty important so that you can start making decisions about if I'm going to live on campus or commute um, or, you know, just different things along the way before we get to, you know, really apply for orientation and things. Great. Turner? Yeah, so once admitted into Tennessee Tech, you'll be congratulated via email. We actually do a mail out um, that includes next steps. Um, we are also going to get a virtual copy of that through your email that you applied with. Um, and that first step is very similar to what everyone else has said. It's setting up our portal. Our portal is called Tech Express. 
we will ask them to check that every day religiously. I mean, we want you to check it because it is going to be your ultimate guide to getting here. Um, it is how you will probably the first step would be um, go ahead and apply for housing. When that opens, you have to be admitted in order to apply for housing. Housing will open around October for us. So we're going to really push for that. Once you're admitted, apply for housing. And then the next step is going to be really pushing you, making sure you're meeting that deadline for scholarships, filling out our departmental um, application and that deadline's December 15th. And then after that, you're getting into more of the fun stuff like signing up for orientation and those kind of things. So again, Tech Express is the easiest, but we will make the phone call if we don't hear from you. We will send a letter. We will reach you other ways. Um, if, if we haven't heard back from you or we don't get the responses that we need. But again, probably the first two steps I would say are housing and scholarships are what we focus on. Great. That's awesome. Tyler alluded to probably the next question I'm going to ask and what is top of mind for a lot of our school counselors right now is the new FAFSA that is coming up. What 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 are we thinking about the new FAFSA? Have you all made any preparations at your institutions for the new FAFSA? And I'll just let whoever would like to chime in. If you haven't, we, we kind of all are in the same boat. We don't really, we all know what we know right now, but didn't know if there were uh, any specific institutions that had made any accommodations so far. Um, so I'll start. Um, I've been in financial aid for four years, so I have a pretty good depth of knowledge in it. Um, so a few things to know. One, it's going to be simpler to apply. Um, there's less questions on it. I think the current FAFSA has a little over 90. The new FAFSA is going to have roughly, I think, a third of that. Um, and instead of it being the estimated family contribution, now you'll have what's called a student aid index. Um, if EFC would go from zero to 999,000. The new student aid index will go from negative 1,500 up. Um, and what that basically means is that more students will be eligible for Pell Grant funding. And so if you have students that are on the fence about completing the FAFSA, please encourage them to do it at least once the first time that they apply um, because there's no harm in completing it and it should be easier to complete for a majority of people. The only exception to that is going to be people that have unusual circumstances. Um, one of those dependency questions that are listed, the 10 dependency questions, if they mark yes to one of those, or they have some kind of other unusual circumstance that maybe the counselor knows about, um, the student will still need to complete the FAFSA as normal, but then work with the financial aid office at the institution that you choose to attend um, to make sure that we're we completed it correctly and that we don't maybe need to make an appeal or an adjustment of some kind based on unusual circumstances beyond what the FAFSA naturally will answer. So I think that that's pretty much a generic rundown as far as information that we're giving to, to everyone. It's just, you know, making people aware of when it's going to open because normally it opens October 1. It's not going to be that way this year. Um, so getting everybody used to that. And once it opens, uh, studentaid.gov, we don't want, you know, people thinking that they can just wait, get it done early, uh, because it might take some time for the Department of Ed to get those things to us. So um, that's pretty much my advice, I think, on that. That's great. Anyone else want to chime in there? Yeah, um, Pellissippi is creating a we're almost finished with a flyer of uh, just to make everybody aware of the new information uh, we plan on discussing it discussing the new the facts of simplification with our counselor meeting which is october 6th um, and we've already started scheduling my team uh, FAFSA nights at the high schools in january which is instead of october um, where we actually go to the high school and we do uh, FAFSA completion events So over here at Tennessee Tech, um, we it's really cool. Our admissions office is actually in the same building that our financial aid office is in. So we're just working hand in hand with our director, um, staying in constant communication on those updates so that we can get those out to people as soon as we know them. So just constant communication. Basically, same thing here. Uh, I, my words were going to be bracing for impact. I feel that way almost every every year, uh, no matter what what the FAFSA is, uh, I'll believe it's simpler when I see it. Um, and uh, so uh, when the government tells me they're making something simple, I, I kind of cringe a little. So I, 
I'll, I'm a believer when I say it, but uh, we've already had uh, school counselors uh, reaching out to us about fast and ice, what they could, uh, what we could do to help them. Uh, it'll be communicating and over communicating to students what's needed. You know, the documentation that's needed. Um, you know, that's first and foremost. What people don't understand is just what they need. They're going to bring the current year's tax returns almost every single time, it seems, no matter what you tell them. So it's just communicating that. I tell them all the time, if you bring the correct information, the FAFSA is easy. If you do not, it's not easy. It's just plain and simple. I don't go back all, all you want. But that, uh, but we're, we're, uh, we'll be prepared when it gets here. Very true. And just a reminder for all the school counselors out there, we do have some really great resources already available online at collegefortn.org, and we're just going to be producing more of those as well as the FAFSA comes along, as um, our annual FAFSA toolkit comes out. We also have some one-pagers on everything that you need to prepare for the FAFSA and filling that out, something for parents to fill out as well uh, with all the information needed if they're going to be bringing that to school. So just a heads up that that's there. And then also a plug for Jason C, who is on vacation this week, well-deserved, but him and his uh, outreach team across the state, if you are planning any uh, financial aid events coming up, please, please reach out to Jason or your outreach specialist and go ahead and get on their calendar because they do fill up very quickly. Last question, and then we'll pass it on to the group to uh, see if there are any other questions that they might have, but what is your biggest advice when a student applies to college? And we'll start with Tyler. Um, just start early. <laughs> um, I don't know why, that it's, I think it's just human nature to procrastinate, but just start early, um, get a head start on it once these applications are open. Um, you know, get a head start, start checking those emails and seeing what's needed for each institution. But I think the earlier you start, the, the more opportunities you have and the longer you have to prepare um, and just, you know, kind of think about holistically, where do I want to go? What do I want to study? Um, how can I afford it? Those kind of questions. Awesome. Sarah? Yes, uh, check your email, um, follow up, follow up, follow up. That's my biggest advice is, especially with the FAFSA, follow up with the college um, and reach out. Do not hesitate to reach out. If you have questions, uh, you know, you, all of us, you can email, call, text. We have virtual appointments, all of the above. Just don't be like intimidated to reach out to us. That's great. Kevin? I would echo what they're saying and and visiting campus. I mean, uh, being on campus that I, I would, uh, I'm not an online uh, buyer of vehicles. Uh, I'm still old fashioned. I want to get in a test drive one. Uh, I want to see how it feels as best as you can uh, in a short test drive. And and I, to me, that is as important as any one thing is getting in the environment and seeing is this for me or not, uh, whether it's a university community college or a TCAD is finding out, you know, hey, is this what I want to do? Because we all have people that wake up that morning and decide, I think I'm going to apply to Austin P today. I'm going to apply to TCAT today or Tech or Pellissippi, and we're we're going to that's what we're going to do. And then, nah, not tomorrow, I'm not. If they're if they come on campus and they see it, they're much more interested in following through with that process. Turn. I would say, um, echoing what everyone said, starting early, um, and really that self-exploration piece of it, um, making sure you're comparing who has what and where you want to land. Um, something that our director of admissions says is college is not the goal, career is the goal. Um, so really focusing on where do you want to be in the future? And maybe you don't as a student know where you want to be. I'm not sure that anyone on this panel knew that they would be where they are today, um, but just really focusing on that um, and not going somewhere for the wrong reasons um, and staying true to who you are. And that's, that starts with like self-exploration. So that would be for me. Great. That's awesome. Tyler? Nope, I've, I'm good. I've answered. You already went. Glad I bring this going today. Okay, so at this point, we're going to turn it over to the chat. Do we have any questions in the chat for our lovely panelists today? 
we had a question that came in earlier for Tyler asking if, is Amy Corlew still at Austin P or did you take her place? <laughs> no, Amy is is my boss, um, and I have been here five weeks. Um, but Amy is great, and she's still here, and she'll answer any of your questions that you have of her. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> uh, we don't have any others, but if anybody, if you do have any questions, please drop them in the chat, and we'll get our panelists to answer them. Awesome. We'll, we'll hold off for a few minutes and wait for any of those questions to come through. But for any of our attendees that need to drop off, I know we're about at time. Thank you so much for joining us and for the hard work that you're doing, not only during this application month, but every single day of the school year for your students. And a special thank you to all of our panelists, to Kevin, Tyler, Turner, and Sarah for joining us today. Thank you all. Okay, I officially stopped the recording, but we do still have a few minutes uh, if anyone wants to pop some questions into the chat here. Yeah. And I also dropped the link for our college application toolkit into the chat because um, I know Tennessee Tech mentioned the fee waivers. I know Austin Peace part of it. Actually, I think Pelosi and all of our TCATs are part of it as well, even though they don't have application fees all the time. Um, but you can find out more about their fee waivers for the month, either the month of September or next week in particular, which is our college app week. Awesome. Great, Suzette. Any other questions? I'll sit here in silence forever. I'm a mom of two and I love it. <laughs> Just use not afraid of silence. She's told me that many times. Cool. Well, uh, if there are any other that come through, um, panelists, if you don't mind to drop your maybe email contact info in the chat for any of our school counselors to have. Um, but after that, feel free to go have a happy Friday and a great weekend. And again, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Okay. Good job, panelists. Thank you for inviting us. Yes, y'all did a great job. I think I learned a few things. So good. <laughs> thank y'all. Y'all have a good day. Thank you. you too, thank you. Just you and me to it. Uh, I think we still have. We have okay. attendee. Um, let's jump over to teams real quick. Oakley, Oakley. See you there. See you back.